What's up everyone and welcome to Sunday with Ola. No, sorry. Willkommen bei Sonntag mit Ola. 29. Ich hoffe ihr hatten ein schönes Wochenende. Right? Good. Oh, a lot of I'm so good with the German. Just saying. You know, that's my uh, third language. It's really good. Uh, except that I'm actually not that good. What's up, everyone, and welcome to Sontag with Ola 29. Uh, we have a couple of things to talk about today. We have new guitars, seven strings, uh, you know, some G-type love, EC 1.7, and then we have a V 1.7 over there. Why is it so far away? <laughs> Why did I put it there? Oh, oh, it's because it looks better in that frame. Is this gonna happen? Come on, cable. Uh, I can touch it, but I'm gonna break it. Okay, let me... Ah, okay, here it is. Frank. Look at that asshole. Ah, it's great. So, the V1.7D and the GC1.7D, as in dick. Uh, what's up? Um, news. News? All right, I'm gonna make an update on, you know, the Gibson story where uh, Adam Jones uh, guitars were being stolen from a truck in the US of A. Uh, there were 13 Gibson USA Adam Jones of Tool, you know, the guitar player of Tool. His guitars were stolen from a truck. <laughs> they were nowhere to be found. Now Gibson have decided to remake these 13 guitars with reissued serial numbers and a special notation on their headstock. So they're gonna be, you know, 13 Adam Jones guitars or like 26 but, you know, they'll have a dual serial number out there. One was stolen, one would be legit not stolen. So that's gonna be interesting. Uh, <laughs> we'll just see. That, that's, yes, that's great. A statement from Gibson and Adam Jones stated, for many of Adam's fans, these limited edition guitars are the guitars of their dreams. And this is probably true of you as well. So I, I think this is a cool act. They just remake the guitars and that's cool. Well, obviously a nice gesture, I mean, people bought the guitars. And uh, the letter notes, in order to distinguish them from the ones that got stolen, we are going to add a special notation on the headstock. Something we believe will make your guitar one of the 13 most special and collectible guitars of the run. We apologize in advance for the suspense, but we prefer to surprise you. So these 13 special guitars will be more collectible than the rest of the 79. <laughs> guitars that they're making. So, uh, I, I mean, if I was a purchaser of this very, very expensive guitar right here, I want to change mine into a stolen one now. You know, that is uh, special. Just saying. Are they paying extra for it being the stolen special? I don't know. We're not going to be able to find out today in the news. But we're just going to continue, at least. Another piece of news that I think is uh, moderately cool is that uh, Chris Cornell's stage used and super unknown recorded guitar, his used Fender Candy Apple Red Jazzmaster guitar, is up for auction. Super Unknown is an incredible album by Soundgarden, and obviously the late Chris Cornell is an absolute legend, one of my favorite singers, I think. And uh, this guitar is out for auction right now. Look at this. That is absolutely gorgeous. 1966 right there. Look at that. 
The guitar was used to record most of the songs on their most famous album, Super Unknown. Cornell loved this guitar but only gave it up due to his divorce with wife Susan Silver. As part of their divorce settlement, Silver wanted Cornell's guitars, which is stated in the court documents. However, Cornell didn't want to give the guitars to her, so he gave them to a longtime friend, Chris Bond, not related to James Bond. This Fender Jazzmaster not only was used on stage performance but MTV live performances and of course used on a record their best selling album Super Unknown. This is a piece of really cool history right here and it's up for $125,000 estimated to be sold for $175,000 to $250,000 which makes a lot of sense. I, to be honest I don't really know what something like this is worth. F***ing hell that looks incredible. Look at this. That's really nice. I wouldn't mind having that. Oh, shit! I have one to sell. I like that this option is available here. I have one to sell as well, you know. I'm just gonna put that in there. I'll sell mine for 2,000 US dollars. Done. We're good. <laughs> no, but uh, this is really, really cool. And while I was scrolling for this auction, I came to another auction as well, which is uh, Eric Clapton's 1954 Fender Stratocaster Slow Hand. Uh, which is also up for action. Uh, bidding starts at one million dollars, which is a lot for a guitar. But this made me wonder, like, what is the most expensive guitar that has been auctioned off? Like, ever. So, I did some journalism and some digging, serious digging. And I found a website on Google by uh, searching for most expensive guitars being sold off as an auction. Because this is what happens on the news. We dig deep, okay? All right, so eight most expensive guitars in the world. Bob Marley Washburn, uh, 1.2 million dollars. Okay, that's cool. Bob Marley, absolute legend. Jerry Garcia's Wolf, almost two million dollars. Holy shit. Peter Green and Gary Moore's Les Paul, two million dollars. Yes, this is the guitar that Kirk Hammett. Is it? Yes, Kirk Hammett bought it. Uh, he just had two million dollars laying around. Jimi Hendrix Stratocaster, two million dollars. That's cool. John Lennon's Gibson for two and a half million. Reach out to Asia, Stratocaster 2.7 million, okay. David Gilmour's Black Strat, almost 4 million dollars. Shit. This guitar was used to record legendary albums such as Dark Side of the Moon, Wish You Were Here and The Wall. So it has a lot of history to it, so 4 million dollars makes a lot of sense. But the most expensive guitar ever being sold on auction, Kurt Cobain's Martin that he used for Nirvana Unplugged, only 6 million dollars. I remember this, it was sold uh, like June this year and uh, to some Australian. And uh, holy shit, that, I, I agree, this is, you know, Kurt Cobain is a legend as well and you know, Nirvana Unplugged, great show uh, that I thoroughly enjoyed. And uh, six million dollars, yeah man, that's a lot of money. But you know, for the right type of fan, maybe it's worth it, you know? It will be a legendary item for a long, long time until, you know, we all die from a meteor or something. Then it doesn't matter that he paid six million dollars for it. No one was going to remember who Kurt Cobain was because everyone's dead. But yes, just giving a little bit of perspective, I also saw Southern Cross Washburn getting sold for $18,000 uh, the other day. So, I mean, there's a market, people have money. I thought this was really interesting and that is the news. Who's up there? You won't escape that way. What's up everyone? Welcome to Ola's Adventure, Sunday 29. You might wonder why I'm wearing these. It's because I'm blind. I cannot always be perfect, long hair, strong arms, perfect vision. Sometimes I have to wear my glasses, okay? I'm just resting my eyes for a little bit. But having glasses is good for this occasion because I have a new toy today. Look at that. Can you see what that is? Can you see what it is? No? Okay. Well, this right here, it's a gimbal. Now, what the hell is a gimbal, you ask? Well, have you ever seen those awesome shots? Videos just super smooth. I mean, I've been using skateboards here and there. That's pretty cool as well, just to roll a skateboard with a camera on, that works. But sometimes you just want to get down and dirty, close to someone. And then you use this. And this thing right here basically makes the shot being incredibly steady. I can move this around 
And this thing is gonna be so f steady, you guys are not gonna be able to believe it. Why is it out of focus? So this is my new toy that I bought. It's a new Ronin RSC2 for you photographer nerds out there. And uh, yeah, this is my first real big gimbal like this. I have another smaller gimbal that is for smaller cameras. Uh, it didn't work that well. Because everything- It's floating floor. Everything, you balance and everything. You can do with reflection. Oh, look at that. And you're not hearing anything. <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? Shit. But this is my first, I would say, semi-pro gimbal. And look at this, look at how smooth it is, man. What's up, baby? Look at that. For camera nerds, this is kind of like an obvious thing. You need to have one of these, but you know, I'm just an enthusiast, I would say. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just a nerd and a fan. But I'm really, really happy that I got one of these now, because now I can do this. People are gonna be like, holy crap, baby, that looks so good. And it's so smooth, it's smoother than my anus right now. It has feet, you put on the feet like this, look. So this gimbal will be very useful for me uh, in an environment where I need to shoot a product or shoot something, you know, some good B-roll because, you know, it's all about the B-roll today, man. That's what makes people stay in the video. It's not about the clickbait. It's not about the humor. It's about the B-roll. Anyways, I'm going to show you a cool little feature with this thing. So I have this phone, right? Uh, check this out. So as I'm moving my phone, the camera is tilting and... What? Where are you? <laughs> Attempt number two. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, look at this. Huh? Okay, you want to film my face, Ole England? This, how do I do this? That's the wrong direction. Okay. But, hello. I want Okay. This is so good. Angle it down now. Towards my face, please. Not possible. What? Why are you beep? Why are you beeping? Great. Task failure. Okay, great. So that was an excellent first try of my new gimbal. You know, I'm so good with these technical things right there. So yeah, I'm really happy about this, sort of. I guess I still need to learn it, but I'm gonna end this adventure with Ola with a bunch of really cool montages using this thing, so... So you guys have, uh, you guys have kept on sending me shit, which is really cool, by the way. I really appreciate that. And I got this, uh, this pedal from Kink in, I think it's Australia, is it? But it's uh, basically a, a, a guitar pedal brand made by hand, one by one, in Melbourne, Australia, Australia. And it looks like this. Okay, let me come closer. Look at that Kink guitar pedal. What is this one called? I mean, they have a fair bit of different cool pedals, uh, according to this little pamphlet that I got. What is this? The Stab Zone. High gain metal distortion, ideal for 90s depth and thrash. True bypass switching, simple controls, quality components, use standard boss style, negative tip made one. High gain metal distortion. I should just read the, the title instead. <laughs> but yes, ideal for 90s depth and thrash metal. So I figured. 
Why aren't we just gonna plug it in, baby? Just immediately. Okay, let's plug it in. Okay, is it on? Let's try this. Ah, that's a tone. Okay, let's go. Guess this is volume. That's the bass. Treble, okay. You see on the uh, signal here, it's basically like a huge ass uh, worm. That's cool. So there you go, that's the kink pedal. I'll leave a link down below, you can check it out if you want. Thank you so much. Alright, so for Sunday with Ola Riff Challenge 28, that was last week's Sunday with Ola, you know, you can download the drums for every intro of every Sunday with Ola and you can make your own riffs, that's what I do you know, I make an intro and I write uh, riffs just to push myself to write something every week and this week's intro, the drums were made by a member of mine, Navs you know, in my discord people can submit drums for me to use for the riff challenge so Navs was contributing this week's drums, thank you so much for that and I must say <laughs> there are more and more contributions, more than ever and I'm also seeing a lot of, uh, you know, uh, you know, bigger acts and bigger YouTubers making videos and uh, doing the challenges which is awesome and I just want to quickly show two of them we have Attila Veros, who is an excellent guitar player and uh, he made this I played together with Attila at uh, uh, Dime Bash this past year at NAMM and uh, uh, he's an incredible guitar player, he has an incredible YouTube channel as well where he shows how to play a lot of uh, Pantera stuff and Dimebag stuff and uh, he's legit a seriously good guitar player and uh, sounds gnarly as f That's Attila We also have Kevin Frassard Kevin is a natural bodybuilder and an uh, insane uh, uh, guitar player as well and he made... <laughs> he took the, the whiteboard from my last Sunday with Ola and he made a dick on it he's right up my alley uh, is this gonna get demonetized now? he's basically spraying all over that uh, wham in there listen to this shit right here awesome, freaking sick, Kevin Frassard everyone even though it's really nice to have these uh, bigger youtubers doing the challenge and I'd love to feature them but the point with the Sunday with Ola Rift challenge is that you know people without subscribers get a chance or like people from you know everyday people get their chance to be uh, featured in a Sunday with Ola so these two awesome guys aside I'm still gonna show three other guys okay and we're starting with Matt Viljaga with an 8 string I'm gonna judge this uh, setup as well okay Humanity's Last Breath Swedish band okay not sure if he's using his amp back there but it sounds great meow 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 well done Matt if you're a whammon, this is Matt that needs to get laid, okay? <laughs> Fortiori. 
Holy shit, For The Ori has 15,000 subscribers. And I was, I was telling everyone that I'm trying to, you know, uh, you know bring out the, uh, the smaller guys, <laughs> but apparently this guy had 15,000 subscribers. I didn't know, sorry. Now this guy looks like he knows what he's doing regards of the studio setup. He has uh, absorbers and some shit here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's good. Yeah, man. Forty Ori. Steve Ricardo. First time I brought the dime to the party. Okay, let's check it out. Look at this guy. This guy has a collection. Yeah, man. Nice, man. Those are not some really nice galloping runs. Dude, I want to see his collection. He has like a fair bit of amps back there. I want to see the amp rack. Look, There's a bunch of marshals and stuff. Dude, this this looks like the you know the typical man cave right here. Like you know bedroom man cave. It's the best one. Okay, let me. What is that? Anyway, that's Steve Ricardo. Well, the f done. Okay, if you want to be just as cool as these guys that I showed in this video, go download the drums uh, in the description of the video for this week's Sunday Will Follow Riff Challenge. You make your own riffs, upload it to YouTube, preferably by Tuesday, before Tuesday. It's easier for me to find, and you might have a chance to be in the next Sunday Will Follow. Ola tasting shit. Hello and welcome to Ola Tasting Shit. That was my perfect Hebrew right there. <laughs> We're gonna continue on this quest and journey of Jack Fisher, my little member, my YouTube member, not that other <laughs> member, not the other little member. My YouTube member, Jack Fisher, and his wife sent us a whole package of snacks from Israel, from uh, that area of the world. So we're gonna continue on with our quest here. I know you like babies. Yeah. So. This one has a baby on it. Bad. Sweet yet savory peanut butter flavored puffed mm. corn snack. The one most of the kids in Israel grew up eating. Okay. I like, I like peanuts and peanut butter. And babies. So, and babies. And snacks. I like making babies. <laughs> <laughs> peanut things. Peanut thingies. Mm. Oh, you love it? Okay, good. Uh, okay, you can pick. There's another baby on this one. It looks like... Pizza. It's begalek piot. That means a spoon in Hebrew. Oh, spoon. Oh, look at that. It's the ugliest spoon I've ever seen. <laughs> mm, very salty. I guess you're supposed to dip it into something. We don't have anything to dip in. It tastes a lot like herbs. Yeah. Nice. I want to try another baby. Strawberry flavored snack. Look at that color. <laughs> oh. Very sweet. Ooh, that's too sweet for me, man. <laughs> you know, as a metal dude, I cannot stand behind this. No, these are very sweet. Oh, rings! Finally! Basically uh, translates to bite me. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, so they're harder, I guess. Mm. Mm. Do you want to marry me? <laughs> Where do you put it like that? There you go. <laughs> Those were good. You cannot talk. At the same time, because you can't hear anything. Why are you talking then? <laughs> well, you like popcorn. I'm not used to flavored popcorn. Just like the regular salty uh, ones that you just put in the microwave. Maybe butter. Maybe butter, yeah. But I see in the US, they have like all the different flavors, like dip them in, in fucking tar and oil. And, you These know, are definitely those. dipped in something, because they're shiny. Yeah. This was... Uh... Special. This bodes well. This has chili on it. That's a good thing. I like chili. You don't like chili, but I do. Ah, chili beastly. Bite my brother. That's what it is. <laughs> also not very... Not very spicy. Uh, spicy? No? You know, the package took two months to get from Israel to here. So maybe the flavor went off. That's what I'm saying. What is this? Oh, look! <laughs> Pieces of... Oh, it's like small little worms that you have in your stomach. <laughs> Spring musk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Bi what do you call it in English? Binike musk? Binike worm? That feeds on your, same, uh, yeah. your food in your belly? Falato. These are carefully, which Kefli. means I'm having fun. 
We're having fun right Happy. now. According to the paper and the instructions we got, these were supposed to be... Uh, chilled. Chilled. But... That's not how we work. <laughs> Sorry. We eat everything. Uh, not chilled. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Nougat filled bamba rolls. Oh, I like these. Ooh, since you like chocolate, I gave you three of them just in case. I like these. Mm. I'm gonna open these. Mm. If I would go to Israel, I would buy those. Overall, I think this has been a good experience. It has. I mean, it was a lot. It was a lot of stuff. We finally went through it all. And Should we do this last four? You know, I'm so full right now, we have to. I'm on the last Israeli snack right now. <laughs> oh my god, we're done. Let's make it count. Mm. There you go. Louise and I have been eating all the Israeli snacks that are available in a store. That was... Uh, whew. That was a pleasure. Thank you so much, Jack and his wife, for uh, sending us. Hi. We're gonna take these home, throw them in a big pile <laughs> in the living room, and then we're just gonna swim in all the snacks and let our kids eat. And we don't have to eat dinner tonight. We have to invite some friends. Some friends? No. no, 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 no. Corona. No friends. No friends oh, allowed. Yeah. Right. So there you go. All that tasty shit. Thank you. And that, my penis friends and vagina friends, is it for Sunday with Ola. I hope you had a good time. I hope you have a great Sunday. I'm gonna go spend mine with uh, my family now after this. And uh, this coming week on Friday, everyone, uh, something very exciting is happening. I'm releasing uh, the single, the first single of my upcoming solo album. My second album, but the first single of that album is coming on Friday. I'm really excited to let you guys hear a piece of my music. I'm a little nervous as well, but I'm really looking forward to finally on uh, unleashing a part of the next uh, album. So I'm really excited for Friday. You should be too, probably. And uh, other than that, last chat. What was the last chat last week? I think the last one was by Jack Fisher. Get Matt laid. Matt was in this video. He was in the Sunday with all the Rift challenge. So uh, before that, we had Jen Majura with a smiley that looks uh, to the ceiling like this. And uh, we have Gorf, Chug Chug, Topper, Taylor, Snore Snore, and Valeria Soto, the legend. Ola needs more ink and fika. Okay, you guys have been awesome. My members, thank you so much for being awesome. I'll see you guys on Discord. For the rest of you guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay, okay. Here we go.